What is up people and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at Kubernetes secret management and how Kubernetes solves the problem of passing um, sensitive production credentials between people and applications in production environment. So without further ado, let's go. So in the traditional IT way, um, there's usually a very limited set of people that have access to production servers and have access to production sensitive credentials. In modern development, with the demand of businesses to scale, companies are doing hundreds of deployments per day. And with many teams requiring the system administrators to deploy the sensitive info um, and, and credentials to servers. Now, it greatly slows down their agility because as a developer, you may become blocked. You know, you rely on these um, secrets to be deployed. Deployed. Now, in the Kubernetes world, uh, your security engineer does not deploy credentials directly to a server anymore. Instead, they pass the secret to Kubernetes. Now, every time a developer needs a credential deployed to their app, they just simply refer to the secret. So a developer deploys their application as a deployment with pods and Kubernetes. And when they need to refer to a secret, they refer to the secret by its name. So now the developer does not need to know the secret value anymore. Kubernetes will then take that secret and mount it into the application. So this way, the process of interacting with the secret and passing it around insecurely between people um, is eliminated. So let's take a look at the source code. So I created an example Golang application and I like to decouple configuration secrets from source code. So I have a separate folder for my source and I have a separate folder for my secrets. And in the secret um, folder, I have a secret.json file and it has some secure production API secret, right? And this is required for our application to run. If I go to my um, source, source code, I have this read secret function that simply reads the file off disk. And when my application starts, we read config and we read secret. And because I've separated the secret from the source code, um, when I do Docker run, I can then pass a volume in and I can mount the secret file, the secret folder into the container. And then when that container starts up, it will load up the config and the secret. So how does this work in the Kubernetes world? If you look at the left hand side here, I have Kubernetes folder. I have config maps, deployment secrets. Everything I do in this video is in this repo, by the way. So check the link in the description if you want to follow along um, and follow the source code. I have the secret YAML file. And in here, we basically define what the secret should look like. So we have a file called secret.json and here you can see I have my JSON value. Now you can either have this in a YAML file and then say kubectl apply and then pass the file in, right? When I do this, the secret gets created. I can then say kubectl get secrets and we can see our secret is now created or I can do the kubectl create secret command, which you basically say kubectl create secret generic because it's a generic type of secret. Um, you pass in the name of the secret and you can create it directly from a file. So I can create it directly from the secret.json file if I wanted to. So basically your security engineer or the person that has access to the production credentials can go and use this command to add the secret to Kubernetes. Now the developer has access to the deployment spec. So what they will do is if you go down to the pod side of it, where we have our container definitions, we have a volume mount. Now this is similar to the Docker volume mount specifications. So we define a volume. We just call it um, secret volume. So I just have to fix that. So we say this volume name is called secret volume. And we say we want to refer to a secret and we refer to the secret by its name. So note that the developer does not need to access the actual secret content. And then what they do is they specify a mount path 
um, to the secret folder inside of the pod. So Kubernetes will now safely and securely transport the secret into the pod. So there's no people involved. So now with the secret created, all that the developer has to do is say kubectl apply and pass the deployment file to Kubernetes. And Kubernetes will go and create that deployment. It'll also look at now the desired state, which is basically we want that secret mounted into the pod. And when we take a look at kubectl, get deployments, we can see our application is ready. It has two out of two pods. So we say kubectl get pods. We can see our pods are running. And then when we say kubectl logs, we can pass in the um, container or the pod name and we can see it started up it read our config it read the secret values and loaded that it is also important to note that the secret values are not encrypted so kubernetes doesn't really take care of the encryption part of secrets it simply stores them and you can specify um, rbac roles and role bindings to basically secure the permissions of who has access to those secret objects you can also specify rules like who can update the secret, who can read the secret, and things like that. If you if you want to take a look at encryption, you need to, to take a look at something like a key vault um, in order to protect the contents of the secret. But Kubernetes is just basically an automation tool. So it allows you to decouple the secret from the application so you can segregate the duties of who deploys it and not have your secret leaked by sending it to different people um, in the organization. So Kubernetes securely and safely transports the secret to the application. So hope that was helpful. Like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments what you guys would like me to cover in future videos and until next time peace